So you need to learn how to tear down a PlayStation 4 controller, and I'm gonna show you how that's done. Welcome to the tutorial, everybody. We're just gonna get straight into the tutorial, no long intro, no nonsense on this. So there are four screws right here on the back and you're gonna need to remove those first in order to pop open this controller. This is something that I've been showing people how to do for a couple of years, um, but mostly I've been including that in my do-it-yourself custom job tutorials like i show you how to you know paint and all that stuff and do really really cool things with your controllers but i wanted to omit that from future tutorials because it just takes up too much time in each video and it's like ugh, how about i just make one video for this so once you get those four screws out i like to take a small flathead screwdriver here and just kind of work my way around the crease where the controller connects to each other um like it's two parts, this plastic piece kind of fits into each other and it snaps into place. And using this flathead screwdriver, I'm able to work around the crease of that connection and pop this thing open. Once you've pulled apart this controller, you're gonna see this ribbon cable here. So be careful when you're actually separating these two plastic pieces because this ribbon cable can break. After you have popped it open, you're gonna find a screw underneath of this black piece here where the battery is. So let's get the battery out of the way and let's get this plastic piece, this cradle out of the way. You can do that by on the sides here where I am uh, grabbing, you can just kind of pull it out and then pull it upward and you'll have to work a little bit on the other side as well. You just basically just pull it away from the motherboard of the controller and then pull it off. It shouldn't give you too much trouble. If it does, just sit there and patiently work with it. It will come out eventually. They do like to give a little bit of a fight. Now, once you have that taken off, then you can remove this screw right here. Now, when you get to this part of pulling apart the controller, you can see right here is another ribbon cable and it very easily pops right out. You just grab it at this location, just pull it right up, comes out, no problem. All right, so once we have that out of the way, that screw out of the way, we're gonna go ahead and remove the insides of this controller. The cool thing is on the inside of this controller, everything is has its own plastic cradle that this all sits in, so you don't have to like completely tear every little piece apart. You can actually flip this kind of outward. This part can sometimes also give you a little trouble. All you gotta do is just work with it. A lot of times for me, I find that it does easily come out, but occasionally, as you can see with this one, it's given me just a little bit of a, of a, a fight getting out. This, this controller was kind of not having it from the beginning. So that's nice to show you because they're, you know, if you run into a struggle and you're going, what am I doing wrong? You're really not doing anything wrong. As you can see, I'm having the same problems. Now this is the first generation controller. Um, the differences between this controller and the newer controllers are the trigger buttons are a little bit different in the way that they fit into place uh, on the actual motherboard of the controller. And down where the light bar is, the screws are in different locations, but generally it's the same process, the same steps. So if your controller looks different than this one, that is why. And another thing, if you're doing this because you wanna do a custom controller, the newer versions of the controller, the buttons that I'm finding on eBay, the trigger buttons don't fit. So you'll have to paint those yourself. Um, not really a big deal. It is kind of difficult to color match some of that, um, some of the like the factory made red buttons or green buttons or blue buttons or whatever buttons you're using. Either way, uh, there are ways around that. So just that's something to be aware of. Um, like I said, if you're taking yours apart and you're noticing some differences, hey, that's why. Um, yeah, honestly, taking apart a controller like this is not difficult. It's actually quite a bit easier than even taking apart an Xbox One controller. If you can believe it, with an Xbox One controller, especially the older models, there's like a bunch of pieces that you have to 
work off there. But we're not talking about that. That will be for another video, actually, very soon, because I have an Xbox One controller that I have to fix. So subscribe to my channel if you want to see how that's done, too. So there you have it. This is how it's done. You just need a small Phillips head screwdriver and a small flat head screwdriver, and you can pull apart your PlayStation 4 controller pretty much effortlessly. Good luck on whatever it is that you're doing, and I appreciate you guys watching. Thank you so much for checking out the video, for listening to me, for letting me show you how this stuff is done. If you enjoyed the video, if I showed you some things that you didn't know, if you felt like you learned something, let me know by clicking like and leaving me a comment. I love hearing from you guys. Thank you again so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.